seems like everyone's here, I'll go ahead and get started. So, you know, welcome everybody. This is gonna, you know, hopefully help you guys out in your future and uh, the upcoming season since we're coming into a new season. A uh, quick introduction for myself is, you know, I started in season four, bronze three, just playing with my buddies. I probably spent, you know, by the end of the season, I had over 2000 games played, but I, I reached diamond four my first season. Uh, so, you know, basically what I'm going to do in this lesson is, like, give you guys my top 10 tips and tricks in order to help you, like, not play a 2,000 game season and get get to where you want to be. Because um, essentially how I see it is, you know, you don't know what you don't know. So no one taught me this information. I had to learn it by, like, YouTube videos and Twitch streams and just playing and playing and playing. And I want AFG to be the best it can be. So... You know, if you guys want to take some notes, that'd be awesome. Uh, hopefully some of this information you've seen before, but the thing is you may have information, but if you don't put it into play, it's never going to help you. So these are things that like you should think of on the daily play, like add, attribute these aspects to every single one of your games. And then through that, you should be able to, you know, obviously succeed and stuff ideally. Well, this is more of a, an overview. So it's kind of an outline of like the 10 biggest things that I've decided help to my gameplay or help to my mental and whatnot. And then after each section, I'll open for questions. And at the end, we can go into more detailed things. I do have a section if you guys want to talk about my keyboard settings. I do very specific key bindings that I've gotten used to. And now I think they're better than the, st the standard keyboard bindings. But like, if you guys want to go into specific roles at the very end, I'll do my best. Um, I played for a little bit in college. I did attend college for like a year and a half where I played on the team before the military. I played on multiple like small competitive teams, got a lot of competitive experience. So some of these may be tailored towards that a little bit, but you know, they should be able all be applicable to your solo queue. So, uh, you know, without going too deep into it, uh, we'll just go ahead and start right off. So tip number one is probably something you guys have heard before. And it's really just like having a goal and how ha having a purpose, but not like putting placing limits on yourself. Right. So, what I wrote here is basically if you're silver and you want to be gold, you should try to achieve the level of platinum. And hopefully these tips help you get there because there's not that much of a difference in those, in those levels compared to what people may say, um, you know, and just basically that same perspective. So keeping, having a goal is always important uh, because then you can set, you know, check marks to reach that goal. And by the time you fill up all those check marks, you're going to be there before you know it. And in my opinion, if you can get gold, you can get platinum. So, you know, just just don't limit yourself. Keep that mental uh, ambition or whatever you want to call it, and you know, keep pushing forward. That's a general tip. I'm sure that's very obvious for some of you. So, uh, I wouldn't doubt that's the first time you thought about it. And you're like, oh, this is this is gonna be how the whole brief is gonna be. But we're gonna get into some more advanced techniques later. I just want to set the pace. Tip number two, big tip. Uh, kind of touched on it in tip one is that like high elo honestly from playing on probably 20 plus accounts multiple times diamond you know first time master everything is that high elo is is just a perception uh some of you may have played with me before and been like oh like oh he's diamond he's master you know he'll carry you. but realistically i see better players on average in gold elo games and i've heard other you know challenger streamers and whatnot say this as well uh I see better players in gold games because they're more optimistic and they don't quit and they're more willing to learn than I do in diamond games. Uh, diamond does have that like, you know, status of like, you're either playing with high platinum players that have been stuck forever and can't get out. They don't know how to, or you're playing with like low diamond players that think they're all that because they made it there and they kind of give up. So for those of you in lower elos, like, like I said, don't set your limits quite easy to get to diamond. In my opinion, I know that's a, a bold statement to make but if you really uh pay attention to these lessons take some notes i'm sure you can start you know reaching those and you'll start blowing your own mind potentially so the next tip also kind of generic after this one we're going to get more tactical in our, in our lessons here today tip number three is basically just you know believing in yourself one thing i do and this is probably one of the most critical tips in this one thing i do every game i play is like i keep a strong mental but i tell myself that like i am the best i am the best player on the team 
And when I'm identifying games that, or like strategies at the beginning of the game, what I tell myself is, as a jungler, I go, this is going to be a jungle different game. I never go into the mindset of like, I hope I get carried. Oh, their bot lane's better. Oh, this and that. Like, you know, I try to limit my excuses and I try to sit, tell myself every game, you are the best player. If you lose, it's your fault. If you win, it's your success. And that's kind of the mindset you have to get into is, uh, you know, if you start dragging yourself down that rabbit hole, like, oh, I've had such a tough streak of games. I hope they carry me this game. One, you're either tilted and you shouldn't be, shouldn't be playing, or two, you've elo capped yourself. So uh, hopefully you guys, uh, you know, understand that concept, but just every game bring in like that mental fortitude of like, it's my, it's my, it's the reason what I did contributed to our win and what I did contributed to our loss. And once you take that, like that mindset, you're going to propel yourself cra like crazy far. Along with this, uh, you know, like I mentioned, tilting, learn how to take breaks, right? So obviously everyone's going to tell you don't play tilted. But if you're someone like me who really only plays one game at a time, um, like for for years, right? When I first started playing video games, I played Maple Story. All I played was Maple Story in and out. When I started playing League, all I played was League of Legends in and out. So like, it it can be difficult when people are like you're tilted, you're losing, take a break, you know, walk away, and then you're like, well, what do I walk away to, right? Like, I don't play anything else. I don't really care to learn another game. Like this is what I want to do, and this is what I want to be good at. But realistically, like that's it's so crucial to to find an outlet. Uh, personally, for me, I've been starting to play like Valorant, you know, Among Us, Halo, Fall Guys, right? Just basic popular games where it's going to be quick to find a game. It's going to give me a mental reset. I could find some buddies and play it with, chill out. Especially we have unique opportunity because, like, I know for myself before, you know, uh, like AFG started is like, yeah, I had people that you know, play in here and that, but they're very inconsistent, you know, they may not be as dedicated or whatnot, or they like other games, and that's awesome, you know, like, they're my buddies, but then, like, it's hard to, like, find a group of people to play with that, if you only want to play a league, it's hard to find a group of five people that only want to play a league, but through AFG, we have that, like, amazing opportunity to just post in the chat and be like, hey, you guys want to play some normal games? Like, I can't play ranked anymore, I'm going to lose my mind, you know, I'm crushing my elo, uh, you know, do you guys want to play some games? And Nine, nine times out of ten, there's going to be someone like, yeah, you know, let's jump into Discord and go chill and relax. So I think that's a pretty unique opportunity we've been presented through AFG. So something you guys should utilize. Um, but yeah, just, you know, if you guys don't know, the more you lose in ranked, the digger or the digger, the deeper you dig the hole uh, in your MMR, it, it's just exponential, right? So if you lose one ga one game, sure. If you win one, maybe it evens out. But if you w lose two, you know, it it impacts your MMR, but not drastically. But if you lose five, it's going to be like yeah. 10 times as bad as losing two. So uh, just things to consider. You don't want to keep digging that hole. So you want to learn how to take breaks. Cool. Any questions to this point? Awesome. So if not, silence, you know, silence is consent. Cool. We're just going to move on. Tip number four, uh, we're going to start getting more into the actual tactical gameplay tips. So we've gone through, you know, b building a mindset, uh, being smart uh, with when and how you play. But now tip number four is going to be having a small, effective champ pool. You guys may have heard this before, uh, but I really want to dial in on this point. So small, effective champ pool, right? Having between maybe two to three champions that you're comfortable with uh, and you're either going to be on two sides of the coin so you're either going to be a meta expert or you're going to be a champion specialist champion specialist essentially means you're a one trick uh, but as you guys know like a good portion of challenger and high elo is dominated by one tricks reason for this is if you focus on a specific champion you know the ins and outs of the champion then you can focus on gameplay more than you can focus on you know what you're doing or you're pathing or etc etc like you already know your matchups now you can focus on impacting the map um along the same lines uh you don't have to be a one trick if you want to be a meta specialist play the meta uh you know adapt each each patch to the meta play this top two or three stronger champions spend some time learning them and then you know, enact on your on your macro and whatnot uh so you know trying to drill it into the ground but uh or drill it into your minds but Small effective champ pool will carry you. 
Uh, prime example, uh, Lily, a new champion coming out. I don't have too many games on her, but as a lot of you may know, I have a lot of games on Hecarim. When I play Hecarim, like, I don't think my pathing's usually pretty smooth. I can carry games very consistently. But if I play Lilia, try to practice her player, I spend more time looking at my jungle camps than looking at the map, and I take away from my own gameplay. So uh, things to consider, the more comfortable you are on the champion, the more you can focus on your macro and affect the game. Cool. Questions on that? Also, I play in that. Awesome. So I'm just going to keep rolling along with these. Like I said, it's kind of an overview, but if you guys are taking notes, these are things that you sh truly should I implement in your games. So tip number five. Uh, is something I learned within the last couple years. So, uh, like I said, I got diamond really early in my in my league career over my six years or so of playing. Uh, but I've been a diamond player for five years, right? And it's not until the last like year or two that I really uh, utilize this next tip, which is basically that the game starts in loading screen. Uh, so what I mean is. Like loading screen, if you haven't already in champ select, is where you should like really find out your strategies and give give yourself a basic concept of how you're how you're gonna win this game, how you're gonna apply yourself to this game, and what your role is. So, uh, first bullet point on this, basically, like take your bathroom breaks after you choose your champion. Right, you hopefully you're not last pick. You have 60 seconds, a minute and a half, whatever. Go grab your water. Go take your bathroom break. Come back. Focus be ready to focus on the game when that loading screen is going on that zero to a hundred percent that's all the time you have which could be 15 seconds to two minutes to really figure out what you're going to be doing so um you know first first thing to look at basically is identify your team comp right so are you a poke comp are you an engaged comp are you a split comp are you a team fight comp etc and that's going to kind of tailor into your role so a lot of my tips are going to be, uh, or my examples will be ta tailored towards the jungle, but like I said, they should apply to every role. So if I'm playing like Hecarim, I'm looking to snowball the game, looking to engage and whatnot. Um, I'm looking at the enemy jungler like, hey, oh, he's playing Graves. Graves is a pretty strong power farming champ. He's a hard champ to keep up with, but he's not the strongest in the early game. So if I can establish dominance over the early game, uh, then I can take over the game. So my pathing is going to be deviated based on those factors. Uh, maybe if you're a mid lane and you're looking and you're saying, okay, well, their top pick to tank, our top pick to tank, the kill potential in top lane is very limited, but our bot is a little stronger. So if I put pressure towards our bot lane, then we can go ahead and take over the game through top and or through bot, sorry. And no matter what, both both top laners are going to be a tank at the end of the day. So um, if you're looking at that aspect and you're a mid laner, you know, maybe you're playing someone who can roam, you're going to want to push in your lane, roam to bot lane, and almost exclusively ignore top lane because you know no matter what happens top, your bot lane is going to be the difference in the game. Uh, so that's kind of the concept I want you guys to understand is identifying those win conditions, essentially. So if you're like in a losing lane, Number one, you know, your job is going to be to play safe. So you identify, oh, I'm in a bad matchup. I got counterpicked or whatnot. You want to identify like, oh, my job is going to be play safe. You don't want to be that wild card that, you know, maybe you outscale because you're a late game, but you lose in the early and you're constantly trying to fight your laner. You're causing disadvantages for your team. Maybe you have a winning lane topper bot and you just can't get it through, you know, through your brain to be like, I just need to chill and farm. And you end up costing your team more uh, you know, end up causing more issues for your team. So don't be that wild card. Know your role, play to it, and just be really smart with your gameplay. Um, yeah, I know I don't have too much more to talk on that one. We can talk a little bit more uh, specific matchups and whatnot if you guys have questions. Uh, if not, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep pressing on with the this overview or this outline. Uh, but yeah, just understand your role. You know, we've all had it. We've all had it. We've all had that game where it's like everyone is winning and one person is consistently just misunderstanding their place, getting caught, you know, losing their lane, and it causes you to lose the game, right? At the end of the day, it's a 5v5 team game, and you have to be the best player, but being the best doesn't always mean, like, you have to go 20-0 to win. So just understand that. Anyone have any questions on that real quick? 
just make sure everyone's still you know still in it with me uh so far is everything making pretty much sense to y'all y'all uh maybe taking some notes uh anything too confusing or do you need me to slow down am i speaking too quickly i will say i have i have like one kind of question you said you know uh identify how you're like you're going to win the game mm -hmm. like what is your advice for like identifying that like how do, how do i know that Jin is better than orn right now you so I mean? yeah so typically this is gonna some of this is gonna come down to experience right like over the course of playing so many games you've seen like oh maybe yeah, pretty much. jackson and mordekaiser or you can google some of these things like it's jackson and mordekaiser uh, typically jacks beats mordekaiser um, and you just kind of got to understand that, that that's going to be a losing lane. Uh, and maybe your bot lane is like, uh, I'm not too ver versed on bot lane matchups, but maybe it's like, I know Jin's pretty strong right now. Maybe it's Jin into like, uh, I would say Ash or something. Ash has a decent laning phase, but she is typically weaker in the laning than Jin because his job is to be a bully. So you have to identify those conditions and understand that uh, maybe your top lane's already winning. Your bot lane is typically in a weaker position, so you want to focus on that lane. Does that kind of answer your question or not? Let me know if I need to clarify more. No, I do think it just comes down to experience, like you said at the beginning. But right. I think personal research is also a bit pretty big. Absolutely. Like uh, like I said in the beginning, uh, hopefully these tips tailor down you know the amount of games you guys have to play in a season. But uh, like I said, I did have to put in, you know, tons of YouTube research, Twitch research, watching things, looking up articles to understand some of this stuff. So some of it is uh, just personal experience and doing the research yourself. Uh, but, you know, there there are general things we, we understand as players. So, like, you know, you've probably played enough games to see the two two champions play against each other in the role at least one time, arguably. Uh, maybe not, maybe so, but if... You know, you misidentify your win con, and you lose that game. That things you should be taking note on. So maybe, like, maybe in that same example, you think, oh, more Jacks will. Mord's a pretty strong champion. Maybe Mordekaiser wins that matchup, uh, and he ends up losing it. Well, that's something you should be taking notes on, like a personal notepad or something to help you remind you, or just mental notes, like, hey, next time I see this, you know, understand understand that should how it goes. That should be how it goes. Obviously, there are always variations because it's solo queue, and you know <laughs> we understand there some solo queue players are just you know first timing champion, they don't know, and they get beat in a winning matchup. But on average, we're looking for consistency. So understanding trends and understanding matchups is going to be more consistent than betting on the stats of your player. That's also why there are one tricks that like there are one tricks in challenger, and there are one tricks in gold, because the one tricks in gold. Even though they have so much experience, they still may not be identifying matchups properly or knowing how to play their lane. So that's things we're trying to help everyone out with. Cool. Any other questions? If you guys uh, do have anything, we can go back over these questions at the end. Uh, I don't claim to be a professional coach or a challenger player. These are just the things I'm trying to, uh, you know, focus for AFG as a whole to get better. And if I'm, you know, misanswering something or not answering something completely, in your opinion, we can talk about it after bring in more expertise, some of my resources, and we can try to get a better answer. Cool. So, um, going into my next point. So this is going to be tip number six. Uh, essentially, wave management. So. Understand, you know, management from the first minion to the last. Uh, wave management is incredibly crucial, especially in lanes such as um, bot and top are, excuse me, are even more critical. Uh, mid, obviously, wave management is still a big thing, uh, but the most abusive uh, way you can, or the the best way you can abuse like a player who you are outmatching, is going to be through wave management. So. There are a lot of times I see players in like high diamond or mid, you know, mid low high diamond whatever that do not understand the concept of a basic freeze. And this is why I think gold players uh, are just as good as diamond players is cuz I will go in a gold game on a smurf, see a gold player setting up a freeze, I'll go into a diamond game the next game and seeing both players just walk in a lane and immediately start smashing minions into towers or just trying to like push 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 they don't really understand the concepts. Um, so 
wave mechanic, wave manipulation. There are a lot of good uh, YouTube videos out there. I'm not going to go too much in depth on it. I do have a guide, which if you guys want, I can post into the general chat. Uh, I know wave management has changed just a slight bit because uh, I believe now cannons uh, don't alternate in this patch. I think that was a patch note. I believe they come out uh, on both sides every time. So I will post my guide. Just know it's going to be a reference only type deal. Uh, but the really, really the things I want y'all to focus on when you are like learning wave management is freezing and pushing, whether it be slow or fast pushing. Um, so how do how do we use this to dominate a lane, right? So I'm a jungler, and I know the basics of weight of management. That's why I'm not claiming to be an expert. But um, I do top from time to time. I do mid from time to time. I play essentially every role here and there at you know a decent level. And I've noticed that throughout, like all the way up to Diamond 2 or so, I've noticed that people do not know how to respond to a freeze. If you know how to consistently set up a freeze, you can almost guarantee like a 20, 30, whatever CS lead on your opponent in every single game you play in an even matchup. And what I mean is people are naturally like scared to fight uh, at lower elos. They're, they're either over aggressive and they punish themselves or they're afraid to like commit. Um, so in most cases, all you really have to do, uh, understand if you have like a four minion advantage or so, uh, there are different ways to set up a freeze and there are different spaces in the in the lane that help, you know, pushing and pulling. But at the base level, if you have like a four minion advantage, you can set up a freeze since, like I said, most people just run into lane and start slapping minions and trying to push them at you. And if you can know how to properly hold that freeze by dragging it in and out of the bush, then you immediately gain an advantage. Number one, your your enemy laner is probably going to be confused. They're probably, if they're someone ex inexperienced, going to start to panic, and they're going to start walking up to your tower, maybe trying to, you know, break that freeze, or they're going to be spamming their jungler. Essentially, they're going to start annoying their team, and they're just going to start having a meltdown. And it happens very consistently. Uh, and the second you beat your opponent mentally, then you've beat them. You know, mechanically, everything, everything just falls in line after that. Uh, so 90% of games that I've played in another lane, whether it be diamond, platinum, gold, silver, I've maintained a freeze for at least half of the laning phase. It's like I said, they just want to go in and push the wave. So taking advantage of that, uh, mechanic when you're young and still like a, at a lower rank position is going to like help you climb exponentially. Uh, part of the reason is efficiency as you climb up the ladder is really what's going to carry you uh, in terms of like value for your, for your elo. Um, and it's very simple, right? So the more gold you have than your opponent, you're going to be stronger just naturally, right? You don't want to go into a team fight with 3,000 gold on you because you're going to be weaker whether you have a kill lead on your opponent or not because you haven't spent that value. You haven't attributed that value back into your, into your character. So wave management is massive. Uh, if you know the basics of a, a push or a pull or whatnot, uh, it allows you to get off better recalls. So maybe your opponent just uh, you know just reset the wave is pushing into you. You want to tailor that wave in a more advantageous spot so that they have to waste their teleport to get back to the lane or the wave rather than um, you know rather than walking back. And maybe you can take that nice casual walk back to the lane come back to your, your wave because you've set it up properly and now you have that TP advantage from your team, right? So everything attributes to making your making small advantages for yourself, which snowball throughout the game. So wave management, you'll deny your your you know your opponent CS. Uh, you'll put him into a panic. You'll put your team into a general like uh, better standing spot. If you're holding freezes, uh, especially in like the top bot lane, it allows for your jungler to have more potential to gank. So your your team's gonna get even more advantage off that. Uh, if you understand the basics of simple pushes, you can set up for objectives like dragon and whatnot. Um, you know, you always see those games where like one top laner's like smacking a wave while the other top laner just walks down. That top laner's probably set up a push. The other laner's responding to it, and now you have a five v four team fight advantage. Uh, so just something I, I I'll post the the guide in the chat later. 
but looking up a you know a YouTube video or two, you don't have to be a professional at it by any means. But at the base level, a freeze or a push, if you understand that, I can guarantee you, as like a top laner at least, even a mid or a bot, you can hold freezes. I guarantee you, you could probably hit platinum or or higher just off basic wave management because it's so critical. Um, before I move on, I don't know if you guys watch a lot of LCS, but if you notice, like LCS players average like over 10, 10 CS like a minute or whatever, right? Like they average like 400 CS in like a 35 minute game. The, re the reason they do that is because they are incredibly efficient and they're amazing at their, their wave management. Uh, they don't let waves hit, hit towers because the second a minion dies to a tower, that's gold and experience off the map. Experience is worth its weight in gold, and gold, you know, obviously is going to tailor towards success and help you carry these games. So, uh, I strongly, strongly recommend looking up basic wave management uh, guides, YouTube videos. Like I said, I'll put mine in the chat, and I can guarantee you, if you guys understand the basics now, you will you will just sky like skyrocket past your opponents. I don't want to go too in detail because that's a whole lesson in itself, but I really just want to for today get these concepts across. Does anyone have any questions? I know that was a, kind of a longer longer thing. Cool. If there are no questions. Aren't, aren't there times to right. freeze versus push, though? You know uh, what I mean? So, like, if you have a poke lane, don't you want to keep it more towards their side versus an all-in comp you want more towards your side, right? Right. So each matchup is going to designate, uh, you know, different, different concepts uh, for what you want to do. Uh, but as a general rule of thumb, and you know, some people might hate on me for this, but as a general rule of thumb, you can you can most likely set up a freeze and over er, in any matchup, and until you get to like diamond elo or so, that freeze is going to be uh, a lot more reliable, right? Because it's easier to hold a freeze and deny a wave than it is to know the ins and outs and perfection of every of every matchup. Uh, so for someone who's just learning, like a, a freeze is the best thing you can do in most matchups. But in some, with someone who's more experienced, yes, there are going to be times when you want to when you want to shove, when you want to pull back and whatnot. Um, but it, it's more of a case by case basis. Like I said, I'm a jungle main, so I don't want to go too crazy into this because obviously I'm not actively in every matchup in order to know, you know, the specifics. But as a diamond player who's played, or a masters player who's played in diamond, plat, gold as a laner, I can tell you that if you know the basics of a freeze, like it, it's actually insane how how fast people break down. I know that doesn't answer your question directly, uh, but hopefully it gives some some concept. Yeah, no, that's good. I mean, it's almost impossible to, with the time we have, to, to be like, oh, this is a situation you want to freeze. And this exactly. Push, so. Exactly. That's going to be more of a one-on-one -on -one thing. If you guys don't know about this spreadsheet, we do have a spreadsheet with people of all roles and all skill levels that uh, offer mentoring services. I offer for the jungle. I, I will offer for mid and support. Uh, but if you like, you maybe you're a top laner, you're looking for specific, uh, sorry, specific matchups. Maybe you're a bot laner looking for specific matchups and whatnot. We do have mentors that can hopefully give you some of that information and teach you how or what to do in certain matchups. But as a jungler, I don't want to go too much into depth on you know the the other lanes because it, it's a little out of my out of my region. But basically, what we're going for today is taking these tips and applying them in order for consistency because the more consistent you are of course the more you're going to win so if you can average that like maybe you're a 50 percent win rate player and with these tips you get to a 52 percent win rate then you're going to climb over time no matter what cool uh good questions though good questions how are you you leaving all right cool one second All right, so let's go into where are we? Okay, tip number seven. Um, getting tor towards the end of this, uh, another bigger concept. So tip number seven is going to be essentially vision control. And if you guys are all looking uh, at the stream, you may see I have a map up. 
I'll give it a second. I'm doing well. How about yourself? Hey, Gerb, you're unmuted. Can you mute yourself, please? Actually, I'm just thinking of that. Okay. All right, awesome. So, tip number seven, vision control. Um, as you all know, wards are extremely important. Staying alive is ridiculously important. And I'm going to give a quick, like, 10-minute, um, maybe 10 or less minute example that I've given to multiple teams in the past on how I understand vision and how, as a jungler, I can give you perspective on how yeah, to survive your lanes. They were... <laughs> all right, so let's see here. Can you guys see the map? Can you see my mouse? Yep. All right, awesome. So this is a nice tool I like to use. It's a Rift Kit. Uh, it essentially gives us a little, you know, our mini map blown up a little bit so we can get some information on it. Um, so we're going to start with some co uh, another concept. So essentially, uh, from the perspective of a jungler, I'm going to teach you guys how to say, stay safe in your lanes through proper wordage and through techniques I've seen. So we're going to assume you guys are playing blue side for this, and we're going to assume that I'm, uh, I I'm a red side jungler. So I'm going to draw some lines, and then I'll explain them in a second. Here we go. All right. So right now, these, these lines may not mean anything to you. Some of you may be on track with where I'm going here. Essentially, these are lines 1 through 7, right? So there are seven lines here. And each line represents a route of a pathing for a jungler on the most basic level to gank your lane. And we're going to talk about how to minimize these, starting with top and going through bottom. So route number one, you know, jungler coming in through red side, um, he wants to gank top lane. Let's say in the case of maybe it's a Rengar or someone who is good ganking through the lane, which is something you guys should, should uh, try to identify in the champion select like we discussed earlier. So lane one, a uh, very basic through lane through these bushes. So how do we stop this, right? Well, at, we we typically are going to have one trinket and one pink on the map at all times. And if we're constantly looking at our map, we're going to try to gather as much information as we can. Uh, tracking Tracking the jungler is a role that's individual to every player on the team. It's not a jungle to jungle thing is something I like to stress is everyone assumes if a jungler shows up out of nowhere, it's the other's jungler's fault for not f finding him when there may have been information presented on the map throughout the game that you yourself could have identified. Mm -hmm. So uh, maybe we've just seen, you know, the jungler around the top side of the map for this example, right? So let me grab the jungler so so maybe we've seen the you know we have some information or some strong suggestion like his blue side is clear so he's probably killing his red side maybe you're uh getting pushed in or something more susceptible susceptible to a gank so uh he's looking to gank you through the top lane first to mitigate this first top route what we're going to do is take our trinket and we're going to try to place it in the furthest bush in the lane what this does is it gives us preemptive information on, on that jungler. And you can use these wards and these vision techniques to waste the jungler's time, which uh, in terms of efficiency, like we mentioned earlier, is going to critically uh, you know, stop that jungler from being as effective as, as he can. It's going to hurt his game a lot. Uh, essentially, if you can waste the other jungler's time while your jungler is farming or taking, or taking an objective, your chances of winning the game you know, increase exponentially. So to mitigate this first route, which is a basic through lane gank kind of setup, is you want to get your trinket, if possible, in this in this uh, bush right here. What this does is you're going to see that jungler walk through lane, hop into that bush. He might be chilling there. If the waves push further, he's going to hop into the next bush. But you know he's there. So what you can do is you can kind of you know, tease your lane or like go up, go back, go up, go back, and constantly bait that jungler into canceling his recalls and whatnot to be like, oh, I can gank him. Oh, I can't. And he's just going to end up spending time wasting there, and you've kept yourself safe. So you're helping your team, and you're keeping yourself safe. So that's the basic for this first route. So now we can't get ganked this way. Um, this is a team concept, so if you are playing 5v5s competitives, if that's what you guys are trying to get into, uh, as a team, if you do some of these basic wards for the laning phase, 
and you like crush every avenue that the jungler has to gank then you guys are going to have a very easy very safe time just farming up scaling doing your thing and playing your 1v1s so now the second avenue of approach uh, or one of the most consistent routes for a jungler is you know going through this bush coming up through river and uh trying to gank you gank you through the river this is going to happen more times when uh you know maybe you're getting pushed up a a bush gank isn't going to make much sense because they can't get in it without being seen by the minions so uh this is where you're going to utilize your pink ward the most so always i always recommend having a pink ward on the map and one in your inventory uh, the concept i like to pr pr present here is a lot of people say oh well you know i bought this so i didn't buy a pink because you know whatever reason but in in an even game vision is going to be more worth as much as items and as much as pressure um so i like to think of it as in like if you die because you have failed to ward your lane properly you're going to give the enemy team 300 or so gold right you know give or take but if you uh you know do like we said and just waste the jungler's time and you stay alive then it's cost you 75 gold so you kind of net game gain in theory or the way i look look at it uh, you gain like 225 gold by buying that pink ward and keeping yourself alive and by replacing it when they get rid of it. Um, and it's just overall, uh, it feels bad buying it because, you know, maybe you're getting close to an item, you just want to keep saving your money. But if you're dead, then it, it's just going to make the game so much harder uh, and you're going to put yourself behind. So buying pink's very, cru very crucial. I like to average between maybe five to 10 pinks as a game on an average solo queue game as a jungler and more in competitive. So a couple options for this pink. Uh, this bush is very, very typical. Uh, obviously, most of us want to place our wards in a bush because it conceals them because as we know, pink wards don't go stealth once they've been placed. Uh, so this bush, this bush is fine. Uh, this bush can be okay if you're really shoving hard, but this bush is typically hard to defend. Um, so if you properly place the, the ward below it, that shouldn't be too much of an issue. So I don't recommend the try too much, considering you're on blue side. Obviously, hey. the map the map mirrors. Yeah, go ahead. Now, can you zoom in a little bit? It's a little hard to uh, see. Uh, how's uh, like, so, that? So use the uh, control scroll wheel uh, like to actually zoom in on your... Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, like that? Is yeah. that better? Awesome. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, the map's a little small, my bad. So, awesome. So, now we've established maybe you want this pink somewhere in the river. The bush is a fine spot, but a, another technique that I've noticed a lot of Korean players utilize, or a lot of, uh, you know, maybe LCS level players utilize, challenger players and whatnot, is they don't necessarily put their pink in that bush if they can get it deeper. Uh, even somewhere in the river hugging along this wall because there is the potential that you misplace this pink in the bush Maybe you place it more towards the wall or as close to the wall and uh, You know, we won't go check the vision in game But there is a chance that the jungler can sneak past that still so you don't really want to uh, You know, so I, I personally don't like risking that I, I like to be as effective as possible uh, if your pink is somewhere out in the open or even somewhere more in this area if you're not afraid of the try it does like one of two things one it guarantees that your, the jungler cannot sneak past and go this route and they can't sneak like around and go that route without going all the way behind you you know through your try which is a different scenario or through uh through behind your tower which is a different scenario but it also makes them stop it makes the jungler or the top laner whoever's contesting that vision it makes them stop and hit that ward four times and like we said, wasting the enemy jungler's time is one of the most valuable things you can do, uh, you know, for your team. One, it gives information of where they are, and and it allows your team to play more aggressively. And two, you know, uh, it it stops them from clearing their camps and giving themselves gold and funding. So, uh, a pink like this, as you get more comfortable, it, is a very viable option. Uh, where it's out somewhere in the river, it covers all avenues. It's not limited by you can tell with this uh, in the bush you're losing half the vision on this pink because it's it's uh, guarded by the wall. Uh, so out in the middle of the open, the jungler has to stop, has to hit that ward. If they don't, then you know you still save your value, um, and then you're gonna probably see where they're leaving, and you can just walk back down and replace that. And next time, now they have to stop again. Uh, obviously, it is a little risky because you're you're risking this gold. 
but it's more stable in a way than keeping it in the bush because in the bush it may last longer but out in the open you you gain information and you waste time so it's kind of a two for one kill two birds with one stone kind of deal now that we have those concepts across we'll go a little faster through the rest of these that way i don't you know take too much of y'all's time uh, but now, as you can see, we've effectively, or for the most part, effectively taken out path one and two. So now if you're a top laner, you're fairly safe. Your chances of getting ganked are still there. Things still happen, uh, but your chances are lower. Um, and of course, in the sense, maybe you're getting pushed in. Don't be afraid to ward behind you. It's also effective, uh, but we're not going to go much into the, into into that right now. Just the, just the baseline. So two, two areas or two potential paths pathing routes have been you know x'd out so now if you're top lane you're fairly safe or you've gathered information for your team so now we're going to look more around around the mid river um mid's a little more difficult because there are many path avenues of approach you know they can go through here behind you they can go through the bushes but there's still ways to, to mitigate this so if you're maybe in a losing matchup and you don't have the ability to go too too deep uh, very basic wards, very close wards, uh, the ones we all, you know, know, know true and dear. Those are all effective wards. You know, I'm not going to knock those at all as long as you're placing them properly so they cover all the vision that you need. Those are fine. But if we want to get into a little more advanced tactics, um, since we're considering we're blue side on this, this ward in the raptor pit, if you're an aggressive laner and you can push your laner in, let me make sure. So let's say you're pushing your laner in. If you can get this ward uh, into the Raptor pit, again, you're mitigating you know, the, the enemy jungler. You're gathering information. And it does quite a few things. So one, if the camp is cleared, uh, there is a chance you can assume that the jungler is on the, on the other side of the map. Uh, if the Raptors are up and no one goes to it, same thing. You can assume the jungler is on the other side of the map. But the earlier you get, the, you get this ward in particular, the better. Um, specifically level 1, this is more of a level 1 tactic. So level 1, coming out the gate, if you just walk up, ward here, and you want to make sure the ward covers uh, the pathway here and the, the raptors itself, you're going to be able to uh, identify the jungler's jungle route. So 90% of the time, for those of you that don't know, 90% of the time, if you see the enemy jungler doing their raptors, doing their chickens, you can assume they're doing a full clear without necessarily checking their, uh, like their their uh, their CS score. You can see potentially what their route's going to be, and if this ward is deep enough to cover that path that crosses, uh, you can also see where they're going. So let's say it's like a Lee Sin. Lee Sin starts his. Oh, excuse me, I don't know why I've got all these hiccups and burps today, but. Lee Sin starts his path. He, you know, maybe he starts red buff. He doesn't do his chickens. He walks past this ward. You can assume he's going blue gromp and trying to get a cheesy level three invade on your jungler or kill on your bot. And you can go ahead and spam that and let your team know what's going on. So very, very critical ward if you can get it off. If not, just, you know, maybe it's an over the wall. You don't have that much time. Just knowing where the chickens are up or not can give you critical information or vital information on where the jungler is. And the more time you have as a laner knowing where the jungler is based off your own or other resources, the safer you're going to be and the more, you know, you're allowed to pressure and try to gain advantage of your enemy laner. So this ward's very good. Uh, if you can't, like I said, you know, bush wards are fine. Uh, if you are doing a bush ward, you don't want to place it randomly. You want to try to gather some bit of information. Uh, you can place it behind yourself if you fear that's where you're going to get ganked. But you don't want to waste your trinket as a mid laner without having some fundamental knowledge. So if you've seen the jungler on the top side of the map, uh, there's a chance you can assume that he's going to gank you through the top side of the map and vice versa. So you want to try to tailor your wards towards where he's going to be. Uh, same concept for for mid having a pink at all times. Like I said, you know whether it be pixel bush or not, whatnot is critical. But if you can, if you have a lot of pressure as a mid laner or whatnot, and you can go past these like pixel ward brushes, uh, a lot of vital spots I like for wards or hate to see as a jungler myself are are these two. Uh, so the basic concept of wards are, isn't just to provide vision; it's to like cut off routes which is what we're doing in this example for these seven routes is we're cutting off routes for the jungler 
Uh, the deeper you can get vision, the more routes you can cut off, the more entrances you can see. Uh, so if you have this pink here, there's a, or even, you know, maybe maybe it's a little, little more like that. Uh, there's a good chance low elo junglers aren't going to always hug the wall and they're going to run through that vision. It's pretty hidden and secure deep in their jungle. Uh, it'll tell you if they're going you know, upwards or if they're going uh, towards you, and it's going to give as much vision as possible. And that's what you want to do with your awards is uh, create as much vision and as much information as possible. Uh, like I said, mid's a little tricky because uh, there are a lot of places you can award, and there's, uh, you know, it's a little... Uh, more inventive for the junglers to be able to establish uh, gank routes, but uh, j just be aware that you want to, you know, maximize on that vision. So uh, with these basic wards, we can go ahead and kind of cancel out these two routes because uh, it's mirrored. Um, I'm going to clean this picture up just a little bit now. I'm just going to take some of these off for visual. Cool. Just going to clean it up here. Um, and the the reason I haven't talked about this this uh, fourth route that much is the chances you get ganked through mid, it's still a route to get ganked, but the chances you get ganked through mid, through lane, are so small unless the enemy is playing Nunu um, that it's not too, it's not really something I like to talk about or even care to consider. Uh, just know if you're playing against a Nunu there, or a Ramus or something, you can gank, get ganked straight down mid. But it's pretty hard to ward for. It's just something you have to be aware of. So there's not really much to talk about. Uh, going into the last couple routes, uh, specifically the bot lane, uh, the the benefit of being a bot lane planer is if you can coordinate with your support, you have double the wards that every other player has in the game in order to like success successfully survive ganks, right? Uh, so just like I talked about with top lane, uh, considering you're a blue side player in this scenario. Furthest bush, same concept as top lane. Furthest bush, best protection from lane ganks. Fairly simple. We've talked about it once. I'm not going to repeat repeat it. Uh, next, the the try is effective uh, for your pinks if you want them concealed. Uh, and these are you know very very overused wards, but you know they do present a good you know good base foundation for vision. However, if we want to get a little more advanced into it, uh, let's say since you do have two two trinkets in the bot lane, if one of you can ward this this bush, uh, this lane bush, and one of you can get your trinket deeper into this, uh, deeper near like uh, the dragon pit, you guys can potentially see people coming over the wall with a bomb plant. You get a lot more vision from this route coming in deeper, so you're kind of mitigating this jungle route in itself and you're going to have more time to react. So you want to give yourself as much time to react as possible. Um, and that's why I see a lot of people go and drop wards, like instead of this ward right here, they'll just drop it like here as close as they can in the bush because they want to be quick about it. But in reality, the difference in here to here is a few seconds, and a few seconds of League of Legends can uh, mean, your, mean life and death, right? It can mean gold for the enemy, or it can mean survival for you. So... Uh, I personally prefer this this bit of deeper ward. Gives a nice, well-rounded vision as a support player, or when I do support, I like to try to get as deep with that as possible. And then pinks, you know, you're you're playing with a teammate. Hopefully, each of you are you know pinking. But if it's just you, and maybe it's solo queue, you're not doing with your support or your ADC or whatnot. Uh, of course, the tri ward is very effective as well as if you're getting pushed in warding back here uh will help give vision of the bomb plant which sit which sits here and if you're gonna get uh collapsed on or dove because 90 percent of the time if a jungler is diving they don't want to take this route because it takes a lot of time they want to take this bomb plant over this wall and if you see that right away or if someone's trying to cheese you and maybe you just died and they're sitting in this bush waiting to kill you again uh you can you can stop all that uh, and you can keep yourselves a lot safer from dives. But that's more of the basic concept. So deeper vision wards, I've talked about deeper vision wards with almost each uh, each spot uh, that I want to present as well are going to be um, this bush. Now that it's been implemented in the game, I quite like warding this bush. It gives a lot of information and uh, you know can show a lot of routes that the enemy jungler can go through. Uh, a bush on the a ward on the blue is very good because again you're seeing multiple avenues of approach from the jungler and you're getting a lot of information. Maybe you have this ward here. They came through 
or you know you can kind of see like they've angled themselves in a curve towards their blue buff or towards their gromp you can kind of assume they've just come from their top side their top side may be cleared uh if your jungler's smart he won't go in and try to you know take camps because he can assume that the they're gone or those camps are already gone and he can start forming plans for his next you know next gank or next attack uh so deeper vision is always amazing when you can do it um as well as the same concept as top uh i, I mentioned warding deeper in the river with your pinks i've seen like challenger players hit this ward or hit this ward with a pink Again, jungler has to stop, hit it four times. Uh, it, it wastes their time. So let's clean this up a little bit. And that's the general concept for warding. So now through these basic war wards of individual like play, you've protected uh, you know, your lane for the most part, not every time, but for the most part from enemy jungle ganks. And if you are in a 5v5 competitive scenario, and you guys are all utilizing your wards effectively, and like uh, like I've shown, you guys are gonna have such a easy and safe time in like successfully uh, surviving the game, and just uh, you know not having stress of being ganked all the time because you know you want to be worry free, you want to keep that mental strength, and you want to just uh, you know play play as aggressive as you want. And the more information you have on the jungler, uh, you know you're allowed to do that. So. Uh, you know, summary, we've basically mitigated gank routes 1 through 7, which are all the basic paths the enemy jungler can take, can take uh, to hurt your lane. And if you're doing this as a team, it only takes what? We showed maybe like one word from each. The jungler can utilize his word for objectives. So maybe three to four pinks and three to four trinkets, and you can essentially like have a 70% like survivability rate in a lane is how I would assess it. Uh, we do have another concept to cover on this map. Uh, it's going to be a bit shorter. I know that was kind of kind of long and you know lengthy and whatnot, uh, but I think this is so vital on just understanding and not wasting your wards. Right, uh, you know, so many times you see a player just like maybe it's a support player. No offense to supports, they have three wards to utilize. Sometimes you see them like like you see wards in the river like this, or you see pinks in the river like this. And then this whole section of the map or this whole section of the map ends up being dark, you know, that does nothing for you. It just it just makes the game that much harder. And now you've actually wasted that gold you spent or that time you spent. So um, any questions on that before we move forward to the next uh, aspect of vision? I know it's a lot of information. Uh, if we do if I do do individual mentoring sessions with, you know, you guys on other time, you can go ahead and ask more questions, get more in depth. This is kind of quick, kind of speedy for the sake of, you know, time and, uh, you know, not taking over your guys' Saturday. So, uh, you know, ask questions as, as you need to, but I'm going to press on to the next topic if you guys are good for now. Napkin, just a time hack for you. You're at 50 minutes. All right, cool. I'll try to, I'll try to start wrapping it up. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll move on to the next comp. So I have to, we'll keep the, the next part for, uh, it's more of a competitive thing, so we'll keep it more solo queue for now. Uh, tip number eight, uh, fairly simple, quick tip. Utilize your F keys, utilize your minimap. Keep your minimap at a large expansion scale. Um, you know, very you know important for junglers, but important for every, uh, every role as well. The more you look at the map, the more you're going to find information, uh, the more you're going to be able to assert your presence in the game and you know gain advantage uh f keys in particular start getting used to them start practicing them start hitting the top of your keyboard so you look around the map uh, a lot faster uh the next tip uh objective setup we kind of mentioned this with the wave manipulation lesson uh and, you know it ties into the vision lesson but if a dragon's going to spawn in 45 seconds don't hit your lat or if a dragon's going to spawn don't hit your last minion in lane when the dragon is spawning Try to set up your pushes, your freezes, whatever you're trying to do to uh, you know establish that objective, your vision control. Set that at 45 seconds prior to the objective. Reset, spend your gold, get back to the objective, you know, reestablish vision, and take it. And uh, if you do this as a team, hopefully, or even if you do it by yourself, your objective control is going to be going to skyrocket. As we know, dragons are very critical in, uh, in League of Legends right now, so you want to be on top of those objectives. Uh, number 10, we've kind of mentioned this already. Some of these tips kind of blend together, but you know, like we said, prioritize your winning lanes, know your role in the team, 
don't be a wild card uh and don't just make things harder for everyone if you're losing your lane that's fine take a step back look at your team try to help who's winning and try to help your team propel uh you want to be in that mindset of i'm the best i'm gonna win i want to do it but don't let that take over your emotions in terms of oh i lost my lane the game's over there's nothing we can do you know try to have a, a optimistic and positive outlook um understand the main character theory we talk about this a little bit in our competitive team um at 10 minutes you may be the early game carry you know maybe you're the pantheon or whatnot maybe you're the early game carry at 20 minutes you're going to fall off now you want to start peeling back and supporting your your ad carry whoever's the strongest on your team you want to understand how to prioritize your teammates to gain the best competitive success or the best team fight success uh throughout the game so uh kind of a simple one but just know know your place in based on the time in the game uh know when you know the adc is the person to, to win the team fight and know when you're the person to win the team fight kind of thing um and that's pretty much all i have that's the my 10 major tips uh there are things we can go into after this if you guys want to know my personal like keyboard bindings there are specific things i i do to set up to make it as comfortable as i can as a player uh to make efficiency and you know my my skill level ups you know my attack moving all that stuff uh, but yeah, that's pretty much all I have today. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm glad you guys showed up. I'm going to leave it up for questions, up for discussion, whatever you guys want to bring up now, if you have anything left, uh, if you want to get into specific things after on stream, if you guys want to sit back, like I said, talk about specific settings and whatnot, we can do that. Uh, but yeah, I'm just going to open it up for all of you and I appreciate you all showing up. So, uh, let me know what you have, what, what kind of questions you guys got, if anything. So my question is like you got you talked about vision, right? And setting it up, being able to prioritize objectives or making sure that you don't get ganked. In the late game, now say all tier one towers are gone, right? Mm -hmm. Where would you set up that vision? Whether it be defensively, whether it be aggressively, because you know, we're talking we have ten total wards. If everyone still has trinkets, mm -hmm. some are gonna sweep uh switch to sweepers. Right? Okay. So where would you start setting up objectives, say you only have eight total trinkets to work with? Okay, so um, I, I do have this in the lesson plan. I left it out for the sake of time, so I don't take too much time, but uh, I will answer your question. Uh, so we're going to go back to the, the stream real quick, or back to the, the Rift Kit. Um, so the way I look at this is essentially there are a few lines of scrimmage on the map. So I'm going to draw out a few lines of scrimmage real quick. And then I'm going to point some things out once I get this set up. And there we go. So so you guys see four lines on your map. They mirror, uh, obviously, on both sides. Uh, and what do I call these? I call these the lines of scrimmage or like the boundaries uh, based on the game state, right? So the one in the river is the neutral line. So that's kind of what we talked about with like establishing vision for laning phase and whatnot is this is the neutral line. Uh, both sides are fighting for control of this this area, but this is where the game's at an even state. Now you guys may have noticed that each line of scrimmage lines up with your set of towers, right? So the second line, or the or we'll, we'll call it the first line, and the neutral line will be line zero. So for the first line, it lines up with all tier one towers. Interesting, right? The second line right, lines up with all two tier two towers, and the third line lines up with all tier three towers so how you want to look at this is basically as towers fall or you know yeah so as towers fall the lines of scrimmage push and pull so for example okay, so like let's area. say you lose your tier one tower then the li this line of scrimmage let me try to erase it real quick this line of scrimmage is going to push back on that sector to the other line right Some something along those lines uh so as a team in the winning state or in the advantage, what you want to do is start pushing uh, pushing forward. So now this neutral line's kind of been distraught. You know, the tower's been taken. Uh, what you want to do as a team is come in and start placing vision in these more deeper and more critical spots so you can try to gain control, right? Because like I said, you, you know, even if you just want to look at it at target, targeting the jungler, the deeper your vision is, the more information you're going to pull and the easier time you're going to have taking objectives. So this tier one tower has fallen, for example, uh, before, you know, your wards, I'm just going to do this real quickly, you're, you know, in river or whatnot. Now what you want to do is you want to take these wards 
and start pushing them into those deeper critical lines. You want to keep extending your vision, right? As li as towers fall, as lines of vision uh, get pushed deeper, you want to keep aggressing with that vision, keep getting deeper and deeper into those sections, and this is how you're going to gain advantages. Uh, the example I'm going to use is, let's say, uh, you know, not to pick on support players, but we all know, you know, uh, they have a very big role in getting that vision stab established, and some of them don't respect the lines of vision. So we have, you know, uh, where is my support pick? So now we have our, you know, our lowly Janna coming through the river, coming through the river, but this tier one is gone and she's not respecting that. She goes to push push a ward somewhere towards the red. Boom. You have this, this, uh, this green ward here deeper. Immediately, what you want to do as a team is start collapsing. Uh, you know, use that vision to your advantage. If you're all on the top side, you could even look to set up, you know, like a, a rift herald or, herald or something. But you want to now keep pushing your pressure forward maybe you collapse and kill that janna and now you know uh, may maybe dragons up now this dragon is free because it's a 4v5 and they don't have the ability to contest right so you want to just constantly push forward your vision and keep keep applying pressure to the team and you never want to let it up uh so big thing with this is a lot of people will like apply their pressure once push up once and then these wards will get cleared out and and that's the end of it they're like okay well they cleared our wards that's done we don't want to spend more money on wards uh but if you're in those roles like every role right should carry pinks everyone it should be everyone's job to constantly keep going back to those spots and as they clear them out throw them right back up and this is how you snowball a lead so you get that pick on that janna uh, maybe your team's able to take an objective or another tower off it somewhere on the map because you have information on where their players are now you've you know maybe taken this mid tower out through that pressure uh and your line of scrimmage is going to go even deeper and now you can start controlling the mid side of the map um so you just want to keep applying pressure concepts same for for everything but looking on the other side of it if you are the team that is losing uh you have to understand these lines of scrimmage as well if all your tier one towers are gone then you have a limit to where you can extend your vision so you don't want to necessarily go too deep past these lines because as we just said if you do there's a good chance you're going to get collapsed on and die so you want to play very respectful and understand your limitations as a team whether you're ahead or behind and that way you can uh you know make macro decisions and gain uh gain advantage in the advantage in the game so you know maybe all your outer towers are killed you're stuck in your base uh you know the enemy has complete control of this area and you don't respect the line of scrimmage, you walk out, you die, potentially the game's over, right? Maybe the team just groups up and ends the game. Um, so that's, you know, that ties into setting up, setting up the objectives like uh, like you asked. Um, if you can establish that early pressure, you know, you can get those picks, you can do whatever, and you can basically have those objectives for free. If you're in a neutral state, you just want to hit those key points, you want to ward behind, in the pit, outside, things like that. Uh, in order to you know just gain advantage, which I'm sure some of you uh, understand uh, you know fairly well, just getting vision in the area, controlling the area, obviously is going to help you establish dominance. Walking in groups, jungle paired with support, get cool with your support if you're a jungler, get cool with your jungle if you're a support. Walk into the jungle together because strength in numbers is going to be very beneficial for pushing that vision. Does that answer your question? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Uh, any other questions? Any specific questions? Uh, I'll, I'll take some, you know, specific role questions if we want now. But this is pretty much the end uh, of what I have to say. So it's up to you guys to keep it going or not. If not, awesome. If you guys, uh, you know, maybe you guys are afraid to ask questions. That's cool. I didn't like talking that much in school either. So. Uh, if you guys want to reach out to me on the Discord, napkin, uh, hashtag 9177, ask me your personal questions, uh, set up mentoring sessions. You know, we I like VOD reviews and whatnot, find the game you want to talk about. But otherwise, I really don't have too much more for you guys today. Uh, hopefully, you took some good notes, got some good information, uh, you know, basic concepts, the key concepts, you know. Uh, and hopefully, you guys don't have to spend 2,000 games a season to get your rank like I did, climbing through the ladder, trying to learn these things with no one teaching them. But yeah, that's about all I got. If I'll give a, another minute or so for questions for before, before we close it up.
Hey, just want to thank you again so much for putting this on. Yeah, I'm gonna feel like there's a lot of good info here that uh, a lot of people will get something out of. So, Absolutely. and then just a shout out again to you, um, everybody that's been with AFG for a while, uh, putting a lot of work in, and the awesome community that's here. Um, there's a lot to learn. Uh, there's a lot of people to play with. So this is just the first of many opportunities. And to do stuff like this, it just takes uh, people like uh, like yourself, Mapping, that like wants to take the time to get that information out there and really to make themselves available to make everybody better. And that's kind of what it's all about here. So, absolutely, yeah. no, yeah, it's a great opportunity for me as well. To just to uh, you know, I, I like to help people and you know do what I can. So uh, I like to be you know, I, I love this community. I want us to be the best we can be. So you know, I'm always open to helping.